sure. Did you have any input on you know the the stuff that you did on the show? No, zero. I, I was I kept my mouth shut and I just listened to everything they said to me because the last thing I wanted to do was fuck up their yeah. machine that they have running there and yeah. you know and have me fuck up a shot or something and you know it's a big production it's the walking dead and you know and then it's like oh here's greg's friend you know made up as a zombie and i'm holding up the whole show or something that's the last thing i wanted to happen so i just made sure i did every single thing they told me because you know obviously the pull through the head is done with with visual effects and so it was very important they they have a VFX, vfx guy on the set and he was like telling me exactly where my head like he's like okay you know, Chandler's going to come down. He's going to make the movement. He's got like a rubber, you know, thing that looks like a pole. So he's going to cut. He's going to come down, and I need your head, like, and he would show me the area, like, with his hands. I need your head, like, right exactly here. Wow. So you need to land right at this spot because that's so when it goes into the computer, everything matches up with where Chandler's got the pole and my head is. And and uh, so that made me really nervous because I've, I've ne- I'm not an actor by any mm. means, and I know wearing zombie makeup. I'm not really acting. I've just got this basically a mask on with all the zombie makeup. And it wasn't too hard to do that. I've been watching them my whole life. So I felt like I was born to be a zombie. (laughs) But but having to make sure that just from those technical details, like, you know, if your head's a half an inch off, you have to do it again and again and again until your head's in the right spot so it matches up in the computer. So I actually got really nervous about that because the last thing I want to do, like I said, is hold up their shoot you know, because I'm not even supposed to be there. I'm just Greg's buddy. You know, it's not like I'm a guy that got hired to do it. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, But I nailed it on my first take. I nailed it. And one of the assistant directors came over after Greg yelled cut. And uh, he goes, did you hear the guy like say like there's some guy like whooped in the background and started clapping? I'm like, yeah, I heard that. He goes, that's our VFX guy. You nailed it. He never claps for anything. Oh, so the guy was very excited awesome. that uh, he the guy literally thought. He was going to be stuck with me for like an hour trying to move my head a quarter of an inch each take to get it right. And I got it on the first take, which then kind of bummed me out because then I was done. <laughs> <laughs> it's bittersweet. Then, you're like, can we just like, do it a okay, couple more done. times? You're <laughs> like, I was like, what? I, I want to do more. <laughs> like, you're finished. <laughs> Any chance that I could have survived that pull to the head so I can just do a couple more minutes? No? All right, <laughs> yeah. Or, or like, I was like, you sure you don't need it from other angles? <laughs> like, different setup or like a Van Damme death. Death. <laughs> yeah, Greg smiled and he, he's like, "You can keep the makeup on as long as you want. You don't need to take it off." Yet. And I was like, oh, "All right, cool." And I actually stayed in makeup for like another hour before I pulled it off. S- Scott's hanging out in his room, dressed up in the zombie makeup because he just didn't want to take that shit off. Dude, it would be three weeks so for me. I was me. walking around. I was just on set watching them do other stuff. And, <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, I went. I went to eat lunch, and uh, it's funny because you go to they, they break for lunch, and uh, it's in this big tent, and Generally, all the zombies sit together, and the cast people sit together, and crew people sit together. It was very, like, segregated. It was kind of funny. <laughs> so I was the one zombie sitting with, like, crew, uh, with cast people, because I'm friends with Greg. So um, I was, like, looking over to make sure I wasn't getting dirty looks from the other zombies. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, shucks. <laughs> Why is he so important? <laughs> He's getting to sit at the cool kids' table. <laughs> yeah, really. That's- but, you know, they are... One thing I did learn, another thing I learned was everyone in the cast and crew are really, really nice to the walkers. Like, when we were, uh, they were blocking the scene that I'm in, and the beginning of that scene is a bunch of walkers come in, and, and uh, mm-hmm. Carl and, uh, um, I only can think of his name, Andrew Lincoln. What the hell is his name on the show? Uh, Rick. Um, Rick, Rick Grimes. Rick, Rick Grimes. Right. Carl and Rick, are, you know, they fight off all these other zombies, so they're blocking it. You know, as they're they're running through the fight scene over and over and over again, like twenty times, and you know, zombies get not they get knocked down, and every time, you know, the actors they always they're helping the zombies up and making sure they're okay and like brushing them off or, like everyone's super nice to the walkers, which I thought was really cool. That, that cool. is really they, cool. They sound like they've always said that they're like a family, and you know, sometimes you you think that that's bullshit, but like I hear from a lot of people uh, that th- that the walking no, it like very. A family. It very much was, um, and a lot of the, a lot of the people uh, that play the walkers, um, they have like uh, there's about twenty or so uh, actors down there in that area in Atlanta that they basically use over and over and over again as the main walkers you'll see 
in any scene. They've got about 20 regular people who are just really good at, at you know, playing zombies. And uh, mm-hmm. so it's, re- it's pretty much always the same people, always just obviously made up differently. So you, you can never tell from one week to another, hey, that's the same guy. You'd never be able to tell. So, yeah, that's um, crazy. But yeah, they're, you know, everyone's, everyone's hanging out with each other for months and months and months down there uh, on this little set down in Georgia. So um, yeah, it, it definitely was very family-like. Everybody, and everyone's really happy to be there. I mean, when you're working on the biggest show on TV, that helps, you know. Yeah, yeah, everybody's yeah. very no excited. Doubt. Everyone's really excited to be a part of it. Yeah, that, that's friggin' awesome. I'm, you know, I, I saw that scene, and uh, I was, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that that was you until the day after the scene because they never really said ahead of time that oh, Scott Ian is going to be on Walking Dead. They never said that. Just like they didn't say that for right, right. Uh, Game of Thrones. So I saw that, and I was like, I watched the scene over a couple times. I'm like. That's fucking Scotty, and that's awesome. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't even know it was you. I just went, that guy really looks familiar. And then I was like... Oh, really? Yeah, I was like, that guy really looks... That zombie really looks familiar. Like, I hang out with him. Because you, know, right, you can right. still kind of tell uh, uh, by the facial features that it's kind of sort of you. And I, I saw, like, the way they were doing your makeup and everything and how they, uh, like, put your beard to your face and everything like that. And But you could still kind of tell by the bone structure after I after I heard about it. And then I kind of just watch the scenes again. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see that's Scott. Yeah, all right, all right. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, for me, honestly, my beard was hidden, but even and even with my contacts in, it, it was still, you know, it's still kind of my eyes, so I couldn't yeah. see anything really but myself. It's kind of strange. Wow. Even with my whole head covered like that, I still looked in the mirror and like I'm like, well, yeah. The contacts help a little bit to kind of make you not see yourself because mm. you're not really looking at your own eyes, but still. You know, it's 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 a, it's an odd thing. All, of all these times I've been made up, um, it's really hard for me to not just see myself. Uh, and uh, I haven't really gotten to ask other actors who you know done heavy makeup like that. Like, is it the same for them, or do they just like become another character? That, that's so. Awesome. I'm, I'm not an actor. So I'm just a guy putting makeup on, like it to, to have fun, and you just see the character. I, but I I'm not an actor. Uh, nor is anyone paying me to be one, so I, I, I don't know how to answer that question <laughs> that <laughs> I asked myself. <laughs> it, it, it was awesome nonetheless. Um, all right, as far as uh, music goes, uh, I have to say I am a huge fan of uh, the new album, For All Kings. Phenomenal record, by the way. Um, so kudos you. to you and, and the other gentlemen in the band. Um, dropped earlier this year. How is the record different from uh, previous stuff that you guys have put out? I don't answer that question. That I, I leave that for people who listen to our records. Um, I, I never analyze what we do. We just do it. So um, it's not something I, I even know how to answer. I have to say, I really enjoy that answer. Cause Dude, I was just about to say it was coming out of my mouth. It's yeah. like, that's just fucking awesome. It's not even like rock and roll. It's just like, hey, fuck you. This is... I have no idea, so yeah, just, leave it up to the fans. Which yeah, it's is great. your own opinion. That's that's awesome because a lot of other musicians are like, oh hey, yeah, we uh, you know, we we added a few more uh, guitar solos and you know a couple more I, blast beats. I, it, to me, the worst thing in the world and the most boring thing in the world is talking about music. I, I find that music is to be heard and experienced and felt. It, I, I find talking about music it, to be just the worst thing. I, I don't know if it was Frank Sinatra. I said, Frank Sinatra, Jesus, talk about brain dead. <laughs> it was Frank Zappa. Zappa. Who said, how do I get those two guys confused? If uh, Frank Zappa, I think this quote was attributed to him years ago where he said, uh, talking about music is like dancing to architecture. And I, I couldn't wow. agree more. It just, wow. it just makes no sense to me at all. Really, I've never heard that yeah, before. No, That's not great. at all. And you know, That's I can, great. I guess, I can kind of understand that you're, uh, you're in a band, you're a musician, you've been doing it for thirty-five plus years. Definitely has to be uh, boring to talk about music. You just, you said well, it earlier. Well, I just it's don't expression. understand it though, because what's, what's the point of talking about it? Just listen to it, and for yourself. I don't need, I don't need to tell anybody, wh- you know, what we are or what we do or what we sound like. Just listen to it and 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 see how it makes you feel. I don't I don't want to know from any of the bands that I love for my whole life. I, I don't give a shit. I just want to listen to their records. I want to listen to the number of the beasts. I don't want to hear Bruce Dickinson talk about it. You know, <laughs> that, but that's me. I know I know everyone's different. Some people want to know everything. They want to know every the the, the minutia of everything, but that's uh, that's not who I am. I, then you're going to love my next question. If you had any if you were to have any superpower, what would it be and why? 
That's an uh, awesome segue. I'm just finishing up Luke. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just finishing up Luke Cage on X- Netflix. Phenomenal. And, I have yet to touch and, it. Uh, and I, I don't think that would be too much to ask for, like, because he's not, he can't fly, he can't see through shit, you know, he doesn't have, he, he can't cast spells or, you know, I mean, he's just basically, you know, bulletproof and he's really strong. So uh, that would be cool. If I could, yeah, I, that's not even asking for a lot. Like I, I would be <laughs> that's not even that. asking for a lot. That's the best. <laughs> I'm, not like, I'm not asking, asking for a lot. <laughs> Superman. I, I'm not asking to be <laughs> Thor or Doctor Strange or even as strong as the Hulk or like I don't even care. Like I, like I think Luke Cage. That would be. I'd be. I'd be happy to just be like that. That's, that's a, actually a brilliant because if you think about it, what other supervillain is coming to go after Scott Ian? None. It'll just be Scott Ian, Ian being Luke, basically Luke Cage. Nobody else is going to be Luke Cage or anything. Nobody's going to hurt you. So <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, but you know how it is, though. Once, once there's a superhero, then there's going to be a supervillain. Always. That's just the way it works. If a superhero I, I comes, then there's going to be someone coming to take him, take him down. So, you know, that's just the way it is. That that is the law of comics that I should have known, and now I'm embarrassed. Anyway, of course. I mean. <laughs> Come on, aren't you aren't you watching the series? No, I'm he not. thought he was all oh, yeah. well and good until mm-hmm. the guy shows up with the Judas bullet, and it's like, well, there no, that. you're not one because as soon as you're walking around Harlem, someone's going to want to take your ass down. 